Contemporary issues in advanced practice. Nurses and midwives to perform manual vacuum aspiration for the purpose of abortion. The Royal College of Nursing states, advanced nursing practice is a level of practice rather than a type of practice. Advanced nurse practitioners are educated at master's level in clinical practice and have been assessed as competent in practice using their expert clinical knowledge and skills. They have freedom and authority to act, making autonomous decisions in the assessment, diagnosis and treatment of patients. There is a recognised need for nursing to be dynamic and respond to the changing needs of the population. Nurses have developed new roles and have been influential in developing new services to meet the needs in a variety of health settings. The Royal College of Nursing states new roles such as an advanced nursing practitioner have the opportunity to lead service provision and development and can be empowered to influence change and ensure and improve services for women within the current legal framework. There are many professional elements needed in enabling nurses to plan, deliver and develop and evaluate abortion services within their range of practice and within the limitations of the Abortion Act 1967. Advancements within my role may progress to perform manual vacuum aspiration procedures. Therefore, I'm going to explore the contemporary issue of nurses and midwives to safely and legally perform manual vacuum aspiration for abortion. Previous to my new role, I had appropriate education, training and past competencies to perform some advanced roles as specified in the Termination of Pregnancy Royal College of Nursing Framework, as do colleagues working within my service, such as administration of abortifacant drugs, vaginal and speculum examinations, screening, testing and treating sexually transmitted infections, discharge following medical and surgical procedures, post early medical abortion assessment, and providing specialist care to vulnerable women. In my new role as nurse practitioner, I have further competencies such as pre-abortion admission assessment, pre and post-abortion discussions, obtaining consent for an abortion procedure, and ultrasound assessment of gestational age, implantation site, and viability. The role also inquires me to lead and develop practice also political awareness, advocacy and influencing skills. There are nurses in the UK who have demonstrated competence in performing manual vacuum aspirations for miscarriage management or to remove retained products of conception post-abortion or miscarriage, three of whom are colleagues and work within my service. However, the current presumed interpretation of relevant law by the Department of Health suggests only medical practitioners can perform both electrical and manual surgical abortions. There are articles and studies that argue this presumed interpretation of the relevant law is flawed. The Royal College of Nursing acknowledges that, although there may be a need to extend the role of nurses in abortion services, as the law currently stands, Nurses are acting and working within its constraints. However, if there was a decriminalisation, then there is scope for manual vacuum aspiration for early surgical abortion to be undertaken by nurses. In section one of the Abortion Act 1967, it states, subject to the provisions of this section, a person shall not be guilty of an offence under the laws relating to abortion when a pregnancy is terminated by a medical practitioner. An article by Pavian Argent discusses the interpretation of Section 1 in the Abortion Act 1967. The article concentrates on the interpretation by the Court of Appeal and the House of Lords regarding the Royal College of Nursing United Kingdom 
versus Department of Health and Social Security. The House of Lords considered the involvement of nurses in induced abortion. This case was in 1981. The Royal College of Nursing argued that registered nurses were effectively performing the termination as their part was to administer the abortifacient drugs. The Royal College of Nursing argued this may mean nurses were performing illegal terminations of pregnancy according to the Abortion Act 1967. The Department of Health argued this was not the case, irrespective of the precise action taken. An abortion was legal, provided it was initiated by and was the responsibility of a registered medical professional. The Department of Health won this case by a 3-2 majority decision in the House of Lords. Pavian Argent's conclusion stated, A wide interpretation of the Abortion Act 1967 should allow nurses to undertake medical abortions. In reality, the Lord's judgments in the case made no distinction between surgical and medical procedures and made no specific ruling into the conclusion that would apply to the method used in this case. From this article, it is clear there is no definite distinction between methods from the case or in the Department of Health's argument. Lord Diplod summarised that a doctor does not need to do anything with his own hands. His view was abortion is a team effort and the nurse acts on the doctor's instruction. Lord Roskell made the decision the nurse was protected by the abortion at 1967 where she participates in a process that is at all times under control of the doctor, even if the doctor is not present. Again, no mention of a specific method. A further study by Sheldon and Fletcher argued that there is sufficient clinical evidence to support the competencies and the safety of nurses performing medical vacuum aspirations for the purpose of abortion. In their study, Sheldon and Fletcher performed a systematic review of five studies in the USA, South Africa, Nepal, Vietnam and India. The studies consisted of two randomised trials and three cohort studies. These compared the number of post-treatment complications and incomplete abortions following both treatment of medical and surgical abortions in the first trimester of pregnancy. 4,198 were performed by mid-level providers such as nurse practitioners and midwives and 4,341 were performed by medical practitioners. They found no statistical differences of post-treatment complications or incomplete abortions between the providers. Sheldon and Fletcher also looked at a further study by Waits Taylor et al which equally found no difference in complication rates between providers. Their observational study compared outcomes of 5,812 vacuum aspirations performed by doctors and 5,675 performed by nurse practitioners and midwives. Fletcher goes on to write that she and two of her colleagues have been performing manual vacuum aspirations since 2011 for the purpose of retained products of conception and first trimester miscarriage. This shows training packages are already in place in certain NHS trusts. The Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists, the British Society of Abortion Care Providers and the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Healthcare have an accredited competency-based training course for manual vacuum aspiration. This course is now available for nurses and midwives so they can perform manual vacuum aspiration for retained products of conception and miscarriage management. Should nurses and midwives be able to perform manual vacuum aspiration for abortions, there would be non-medical staff already trained to provide this. In the Sheldon and Fletcher article, Fletcher stated she completed an in-house package within the NHS Trust, which was devised from the above training course. If the packages are already in place, 
and prove success in nurses completing competencies. This should further the safety factor for patients and the legal aspects of the Abortion Act 1967. In conclusion, nurse-led abortion services evolved in order to better women's experiences. Incorporating the Nursing and Midwifery's Council's Code 215. This code says we should prioritise people, practice effectively, preserving patient safety and promote professionalism and trust, allowing nurses to train and perform manual vacuum aspiration for the purpose of abortion would give women a choice of procedures in which they can be assessed and responded to in a timely manner. With women who choose a surgical option, not having to wait on a not having to wait on a list for a doctor to perform that procedure. Today nurses perform a wide range of procedures that require the same amount of skill as manual vacuum aspirations, such as hysteroscopies and colposcopies. It does seem clear there is a need for change in the abortion services regarding this contemporary issue as it would benefit waiting times for women and also reduce cost and doctors workload. However, until there is a change in the Department of Health's interpretation or a change in the Abortion Act 1967, this will remain a contemporary issue, contemporary issue as this grey area needs to become clear for professional bodies to change their current practice for manual vacuum aspiration for the purpose of abortion to allow nurse, practitioner and nurse practitioners and midwives to perform this procedure. Studying all the relevant literature, it does seem clear that nurses can perform mad- manual vacuum aspiration for the purpose of abortion and still be protected by the Abortion Act 1967.